Hello and welcome to the Primus Propositions vodcast here, the Lion Roar. I'm Matt Brown, Head of Proposition, and I'm joined by our very own Nikki Hemmings, who's due to get married very soon. Hello, Nikki. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for uh, telling everybody about that. Um, but yeah, welcome everybody to this new episode of uh, Hear the Lion Roar. Indeed, we've got a pretty good guest today, I think. So um, we're joined by Alan Waddington, the Distribution Director for Siren Sester Friendly. Hi, Alan, you all right? Uh, hi, Mark. Hi, Nikki. Thanks hi, for having me. I'm, re- I'm really well, thank you. And uh, at the point where we're recording this, uh, you can see I've still got a bit of a suntan because I've uh, uh, just come back from a, a family holiday. So uh, uh, hopefully that's camera friendly. <laughs> you're looking very refreshed Alan and now I know why you've put a white background on to make yourself look even more yeah. tanned I reckon absolutely I could even have put a white shirt on but, yeah. <laughs> but, but no. good stuff well it's great to have you on Alan so for those um, who are watching this and they don't know much about you do you want to just tell our viewers a little bit about yourself Alan uh, by all means yeah thanks Mark uh, well, distribution director at Siren Sester Friendly I've been here since uh, December uh, 2022 um my background before that, uh, I was just shy of five years as head of intermediary sales at Guardian uh, with a life and critical illness proposition uh, there. And then before that, I was in income protection world as uh, senior national account manager at British Friendly. So income protection has been a long standing passion of mine uh, since my days um, when I came into the protection industry. And actually before that, uh, people who've known me a long time will actually know that many, many moons ago, I was in the mortgage world and uh, actually uh, was part of a mortgage network. And we were big advocates of income protection back in the day, uh, just after mortgage regulation, you know. And uh, so I've always been a big fan of income protection and the great opportunity that came my way last year to join Siren Sester Friendly to take our income protection to the next level, but also be a big advocate for the income protection industry and what it does for people. Well, Fantastic, some great experience there as well. And we, it's great to have you on here, the Lion Roar as well, Alan. It's brilliant. Um, so we'll okay. get into the first question for you then. Um, so th- this one is, is what, what is your view on the current economic market and how do you think in protection, income protection fits into that? Okay. Um, I mean, it's well documented, everybody's concerns about cost of living crisis and impact on mortgage rates and everybody hey it's just about to impact me i'm about to, about to move house and uh, uh in, increase my mortgage it's something to say well you know is that the brightest decision but um you know it's sometimes you, you, you do these things at the right and wrong times you know but it, it makes people make decisions doesn't it um you know when people's income is being affected when their um that kind of cost of living is going up and disposable income is be, is being reduced the tempting thing is that you cut back on everything, cut back on everything. And, you know, we've just seen in, in news again at the time of recording that we've seen the July uh, inflation figures where actually uh, inflation has reduced. And of course, everybody's claiming credit for it, um, you know, but, uh, you know, food inflation seems to be going the right direction. Hopefully that can continue. But we do know there's great pressure on family incomes, on, um, you know, family lifestyles uh, on there, which almost makes you think, well, yeah, people need to cut down uh, on everything that they spend and look at their direct debits. But for me, income protection should not be one of those. In fact, everybody should be looking at their income protection and thinking, have I got enough? Is it right? Have I actually got the right cover that I need? Because, uh, you know, that direct debit for that income protection plan is the direct debit that covers all the other direct debits. And I'm not the first person to use that phrase, but I think it, it puts it into context for people. And You know, particularly now as people are under pressure, particularly on credit, if their mortgage payments are going up, uh, the last thing anybody wants to do is fall in arrears on their mortgage. And if that's because of illness or injury, well, income protection is your your fallback on there. If you haven't got it, you haven't got that safety net. And of course, we all know that there are many, many people who are going to be coming up for mortgage rate, fixed rate renewals over the next 12, 18 months. Um, Well, the last thing anybody wants to be is in a position where they've had some mispayments on their mortgage uh, because we know what mortgage lenders are being like uh, in terms of looking at credit history, etc. And anybody then defaulting to an even higher interest rate um, is on a bit of a sticky wicket. So for me, income protection is even more important uh, than ever. It's always been important. It's always been for me the cornerstone of any protection plan. It covers everything else. Um, but there are fewer fallbacks these days. So you, you've got to plug that gap. So um, I think it's it's certainly something that we should be talking to 
uh, clients about, members about, consumers about, uh, as part of the current crisis that people face? Absolutely. It, you know, it's such an important product for, for brokers to be selling um, to everybody at the moment. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, so uh, just on the, on your new short, short term plan. So you've actually yeah. recently launched that. So give us your view on long term versus short term protection. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Nikki. Uh, thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. Back in June, we launched uh, Siren Sister Friendly's first ever short term uh, benefit income protection plan it's a two-year option which is by far the most popular uh, anyway um so why complicate it with uh, with more options and um, i am a big advocate for long-term income protection um in the event of illness injury you really don't know how long you're going to be um off ill if it's something major if it's uh, if it's cancer if you've had a heart attack somebody's had a stroke they may never go back to work full-time so that long-term income protection plan the plan is the absolute gold standard for what people need but we have to recognise that people do have budgets, people do have priorities. And at its very base level, you take the view of some cover being better than no cover. A two-year income protection plan in the event of an injury, illness, keeping you off work for up to two years, means you've at least got two years to put your life in order. And even if you just take it at the, the, the level of covering the mortgage, being able to cover the mortgage payments, plus maybe your utility bills and your, your council tax, and maybe plus 25% of that for extra cost of living, again, stops that financial precipice potentially for people. So whilst I would always advocate long-term income protection, I know many advisors that go down that route, particularly when it's connected to a mortgage, you've got the mortgage payment itself, you've got to do some life cover, um, whether you then do some critical illness and income protection is down to individual circumstances and the advice being given. Um, but often it's a case, well, I can't do critical illness and long-term income protection. So I might do long critical illness and some short-term income protection. On the basis that if it is something disastrous, you know, it is something long-term, the critical illness is going to pay out, but at least then there's an income coming in, you know, to pay those bills. Um, but of course, it also means that people can get potentially more cover for a slightly lower premium. So the full amount of income cover, 60, 65, 70 percent of income might be beyond people's means on a long term. But on a short term, that might be affordable. So, again, this is where the skill of the advisor talking to their clients, going through the options. How can we best position this for you? What's going to be the biggest need for you? And then tailoring the cover to those needs. That's why it was important to us to have that short term option on there, because we only had long term and advisors said, yeah, we love you long term. But sometimes we need a short term option on there. So we have to go elsewhere, even though they like Sire and Sester friendly and, and what we do. Um, so we're now given that option. And again, we've been highly delighted with the take up rate uh, of it since we launched it in June. Brilliant, Alan. And I, I do agree, you know, some cover is absolutely better than no cover. Right. You know, and I think advisors have got a real job to do like you you know you talked about their skill and being able to talk about this product you know you articulate it beautifully that's what we need everybody else to do um and you know I, I couldn't agree more about the cornerstone of protection I quite like that phrase that you use I do feel like IP does sit nicely in that um I guess you know when we're talking about advisors and we're talking about skill you know one thing that springs to my mind is trust and protection um yeah. I, you know what do you think that you know we could do more of to get advisors to trust protection? It's always been a tricky one, hasn't it? And um, you know, we we talk a lot about claim stats. Um, you know, it's been going around for a long time. But when everybody's quoting claim stats in the ninety pluses, uh, it kind of becomes a little bit old uh, hat um, and almost like the expected. The consumers still think. Uh, claims rates are in the 90s, high 90s. I was at 95.4 for last year. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that they do, but do they even understand what that really means? Um, I think the trust has to come with showing people the benefits that it's given to people that have actually taken that plan. And, you know, I see things on social media, I see things on uh, TikTok, you know, etc. cetera. Uh, what if this, what if that? Um, but case studies and real life examples often you know, bring things to life you know, for people. You know, we've steered in the last 20 odd years advisors away from disturbing their clients to try and make a sale, you know, particularly since uh, you know, regulation came into that. I'm old enough to remember that. Um, <laughs> and uh, but whilst you don't want to disturb people, actually pointing out 
but this is what can happen. This is what does uh, happen to people. Uh, people do get ill. People do get injured. You know, there are all kinds of stats going around at the moment that there are more sick days being taken across the UK than ever there has been. Um, well, if that can happen to those people, it can happen to, to you. And what about your family? What about your household? What about your mortgage payments, uh, et cetera? Um, but to earn that trust, we need to kind of give examples of what actually has been done. And it shouldn't just be around the claim. You know, we had uh, ABC customers that we paid this out for. It's what else did the insurer in working with the advisor actually do for the client, for the member in our case, you know, uh, being a mutual now that could be medical assistance. It could be signposting to uh, a GP 24-7 service or a second opinion service or giving them access to some counselling or some physiotherapy to actually help them get back to work. And I've always been a great believer that people generally don't go off sick to be off sick. They go, they're go, they off sick because you know they're ill, they're injured, they can't work. And what do they want to do? They actually want to get back to work. And just about every insurance company that I know, certainly all the ones I've worked for, including current one, we do things to help people get back to work. And that's not because we want to stop paying the claim. We want to get people back to work. You know, so helping them with things like uh, counselling services or, you know, some uh, psychotherapy here, which, you know, we we would go through something like Red Ark, you know, to do that for us. And we've got great stories on there, the things that we've actually helped people. It's then where we've gone above and beyond just paying that weekly, fortnightly, monthly benefit you know, to get people the assistance and support that they need, not just necessarily for them, but perhaps their family. And, you know, we've done things like uh, arranging bereavement counselling, you know, for kids, uh, because, they, you know, one of the parents has died. And it's a real emotive issue. Um, you know, you don't want to see kids struggling, um, you know, with these things, but um, we can help. And talking to clients about that support and help whilst, all sounds a little bit scary sometimes. You just think, well, if we don't tell them that we do these things, how will they know? How will they trust us on there? So I think real life stories are the way forward uh, with it, not just publishing stats um, on there. Um, but then being brave and being prepared to ask the clients, whether it's a mortgage client or a pure protection client, do you really understand what would happen if you or, the, or another income earner in the house was off ill for three months or more? And then shut up and listen because they actually won't have an answer. Uh, so we just need to be a little bit brave and uh, and challenge people a bit. Yeah, agree. And you mentioned signposting there, Ellen. So mm. do you think that you know being signposted to income protection helps create financial resilience for clients? Um, well, yes, is the is the short answer. But I suppose you've got to think about well, you know how. And, and feeling that financial resilience and the whole signposting and the journey of life has been a theme um, that we've been working on at Siren Sester Friendly this you know this year, uh, been very much the uh, the kind of thrust of what we've been trying to do. There are twists and turns in the journey of life. Um, you know, nothing's ever you know plain sailing, isn't it? And, and and often you know we see that things can be going well, things are going very nicely, and then there's something goes awry. Well, having a backup plan is so important and income protection can form part of that backup plan and giving people that insight to well, where can you get the support and uh, even if you're still getting paid from work and this is a bit that often people forget you know say well i get three months full pay or i get six months full pay well that's great but you ultimately need to get yourself back to work you know at, at, at some point if you've got an income protection policy with one of the leading uh, providers, whether it be ourselves at Siren Sester Friendly or uh, one of our, anyone else pretty much on the on the primaries panel, there's help and support there, you know, for you. Again, I mentioned before a couple of things around counselling and support, physiotherapy, those kind of things. But again, signposting to other advice, you know, that people can get second medical opinion services, you know, the, the, uh, these kind of things. So again, if we signpost people to those services that are available, as part of the advice journey, we're more likely to get that long-term buy-in. The bit that scares me at the moment is the number of people cancelling policies without even thinking about it. You know, we intercept many, and, you know, where, where someone's emailed us, phoned us, whatever, want to cancel my policy, and we're asking the question, why? It's just, oh, I just can't afford it. And in many of those cases, it's, well, can you afford not to? And then when they understand what it is that they're actually uh, covered for and, and the extra benefits, we do rescue quite a few of those. 
the ones that worry me are the people that are just cancelling their direct debit and we never hear anything from us. And it's not just us, we are talk to colleagues across the industry. And as an industry, we need to get better at that and, and making sure that people really understand what it is they've bought, what that direct debit on that bank statement really is for and what it's actually covering. This isn't for now, it's for the future. And whether it's just for you, whether it's you and your partner, your spouse, or whether it's your kids, you know, it's protecting your future. And that financial resilience bit isn't just about now. You know, it is that mortgage payment for the next number of years. It is kids getting to an age where they're going off to university, you know, A-level day today at the time of recording. You know, let's give them the day away when we've actually recorded this, you know, but, um, you know, people making decisions about their futures. But then further down the line, it's people's retirement income. And if income protection is not there and there's a long-term illness, then that changes the financial dynamic. That's that's kind of future financial objectives to use consumer duty uh, uh, kind of language going out of the window. Um, and again, I don't think advisors should be in any way scared of talking about this as part of the advice journey. And my advice would always be get it in early. You know, if it's a mortgage transaction, it becomes part of the whole conversation you know, that we need to build this in uh, to your budget. It's not just the mortgage payment, it's all the protection and particularly that income protection bit. So uh, big fan of financial resilience, big fan of it being talked about at an early stage. Good, great answer, Alan, and I agree with everything you've said. And I think that brings me on nicely to, to do a bit of a plug, really, for the income protection task force. You know, you talked yeah. about the industry needs to get better. These guys, I think, do an absolutely cracking job with their income protection yeah. awareness week. Um, we're getting involved at Primus, so I know Vicky yep. Jeffries is going to be on a panel, um, yep. as are some of our brokers. So, you know, for me, I guess, you know, I want anybody watching this, because this recording will go out before Income Protection Awareness Week, to, to get involved, register, watch it. Mm. But I guess, you know, you've got the IP professionals in the background behind you there. What do you think about Income Protection Awareness Week? Uh, well, I, again, I couldn't agree more, uh, Mark. The work that the, uh, the the task force do is is incredible. I was at, uh, at British Friendly uh, back in the day when when it was first set up, and you know we were one of the first organisations to get involved uh, with it, along with uh, uh, Siren Sester Friendly. Uh, big advocate for it, big supporter um, uh, of it. I, I recorded a video uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you know that we're part of it on there. We've got some activities planned. Again, at Simon Sister Friendly to be supportive. It actually coincides that week with an actual full staff away day. We do this once a year where we get all our staff and we're actually including part of the income protection awareness week themes in that staff away day because it's so important. I suppose I could flip it on its head and turn around and say, well, I wish we didn't have to have one, you know, but, but we're not there yet. And, and we do need to get income protection back up there in terms of how much of it is sold as a percentage of, uh, you know, of protection. Uh, I'm old and long enough in the tooth to remember, you know, when it was um, you know, a, a much bigger part of uh, protection sales. Uh, critical illness has overtaken it um, in the last kind of 20 years. Um, I would like to see that reversing a little bit. I do think critical illness is vitally important. There's a place for both. Um, Please, everybody, sign up for it. It's, it's all on social media. There's lots of you know, useful snippets that's going to be uh, on there. Um, not just about product push, but about the underwriting, about how claims work, about the importance of it. Um, I'm sure there will be case studies about it's helped people and their families, etc. cetera. Um, and you think about how much potentially gets paid out on an income protection claim over uh, 10, 15, 20 years. You know, it, it's, a, it's a huge financial impact on individuals and, and 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 families with that payout you know and on a long-term income protection payout it's way more than critical illness would ever be paying out uh, on the air and yet it still accounts for um you know somewhere around 15 to 20 percent of the uh, you know sales on there so i think it's a really important week for the industry you know for us to just keep reminding ourselves why we need to keep banging the drum about income protection couldn't agree more alan well, listen, it's been lush having you on today. I've really enjoyed chatting to you. So thanks for coming on the podcast. Um, and listen, we'll, we'll uh, see your video in Income Protection Awareness Week and 
we'll hopefully catch up with you soon, Alan. But thanks again for coming on, mate. We appreciate it. Thanks, Alan. An, absol an absolute pleasure, both. Thank you ever so much for the opportunity and uh, uh, wish you both very well. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Bye now. Thanks, Alan.